Hey, hey, what's up? What's up, my friend? So welcome back to this month's market analysis for the month of June. So what I usually do in this type of videos is to share with you, right, some of the best trading opportunities that I'm looking at right now. And also to walk you through my thought process, you know, on why I'm looking to enter a trade, how I manage my trades, the trades I took, the winners and losers, and much more. So this is, re is really to give you an insight, right, to how I trade the markets. So to kick things off, right, the first pair that I want to share with you is Aussie dollar. So you can see the Aussie dollar, this market is in a downtrend. And you know that Rainer loves to trade with the trend. So what is the trend? Well, it's a downtrend. I just said that, okay? And how do you identify a downtrend? And it's quite simple, really. Uh, you can just look at market structure. If you look at the market structure, you see a series of lower highs. Lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, and lower lows, right? It's quite obvious. The lows is, you know, keeps getting lower and lower. So this tells you that this market, Aussie dollar, right, tends to move lower over time. So now the question is, where do you enter the trade? Where on the charts, right, could you enter a trade and have a reasonable stop loss, right? And with a better uh, re uh, uh, target profit, uh, with a better uh, reward for the risk that you're taking. So from the looks of this chart, you can see that Aussie dollar, it has respected this level around the 70 cent, 70 cent level over here, tested once, twice, thrice, then it slight bounce, break down, then what happens is that previous support, right, support, 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 now becomes resistance, and now the price is on its way up towards this area once again. So clearly this level, this 70 cents level, it's a level that's being respected by the markets, and there's a possibility that the market could reverse from this level, okay? so. Right now, it's still too early. That's why I published this video to share these levels with you. No point, you know, sharing something that has already happened. So pay attention to this 70 cent level, okay? A very straightforward way to trade this is that, you know, you can look for a price rejection at the 70 cent level. So for example, the price, the market could come up into this level, okay? It breaks out, okay? And then do a 180 degree reversal and close back below this area of resistance. So this is what I call a false break because the market has actually break out of this swing high and then reverse back 180 degrees. So traders who, who buy the breakout, they are now trapped, right? They are, they are in the red because the market has reversed against them. So as a false breakout trader, you can actually take advantage of this phenomenon. You can actually profit, right, from those traders who are trapped. So what you want to do is to wait for the market to break above these highs and then reverse back and close below this area of resistance. Then you can go short, stop loss, right? I usually have it a, a distance away from the swing high, 1 ATR, okay? And then... Profit target wise, this would be a level to be looking out for this uh, this swing low, where the market could continue lower back and retest this swing low. So this is for Aussie dollar, right? I'm looking to short this market. Bias is towards the downside. Moving on, right? Dollar yen. So dollar yen, right? Uh, okay, this is a, a trade setup that has already run. So this is something that I I've shared last week in my in the Pro Traders H member, right? I will share more with you later. But what I said to them is. This, right, this was the, my thought process, is that dollar yen, I see that the price has come into this area of support. This is a key area, okay? If you just zoom out, you notice that this $108, this is a area of support. And usually area of support, right, usually, usually you want to be a buyer. But you don't just buy because the price is at support. Sorry, I mean, not for me at least, all right? I like to watch the price action and see how price reacts at this level. And then I decide whether I want to buy or not. And when I was looking at the price section of this market, there wasn't much sign of strength because I noticed the range of the candles, it seems to be getting smaller and smaller. Right? The range of these candles getting smaller and smaller. So this tells me that, hey, you know, the buyers, I don't think they are in control because if they are in control, the reversal candles should be pretty large and the price should move away from support relatively quickly. Because if you think about this, if, if there is a demand, if there is a demand at a, a certain price level, the price won't be hovering at that level for too long. It will, you know, move away quickly. That tells you that there is strong demand. But the fact that the market, or rather the price, is still hovering at this area of support tells me that demand is not very strong. And given the fact that the range of the candles are getting smaller and smaller tells me that, you know, the, the uh, buyers are just not there. So what I did is that, you know, I told, I told myself, right, if the price could break below this low, there's a good chance that the market could hit down lower, right? And in this case, uh, yesterday the price broke down lower 
and stop loss right went above this uh, this high 180R above this highs. So now if you look at this right when you are trading this from market structure, market structure works in your favor. What do I mean by that? Because if if you look at this right now, if the market were to go up higher, right? Let's say you know buyers were to come in and push up higher, they have obstacles in their way. There is barrier that would you know hold the price down lower. What do I mean by this barrier? If you look at this, this now becomes previous support as resistance. So if the buyers were to buy, they can push the price up higher, higher and higher. And over here, there is this barrier that you know would would tend to push the price down lower. So as a trader who is short, right, this is a uh, advantage for me because I have a barrier working in my favor. Okay, compared to someone who is long, who is a buyer, they don't really have any barrier on the charts that work in their favor. True, there is a barrier over here, but you can see that if they were to buy, their stop loss is going to be very large, right? For, away from the next nearest barrier. Whereas for me, a trader who is short, okay, the barrier, it's uh, pretty much, you know, near my entry point. So from a risk to reward perspective, right, the short trader has this advantage. Okay, so this is why I love trading near market structure and dollar yen, right? Uh, shorting this swing low, right? It's a trend continuation trade and the stop loss is again 180R above this highs. This, right, acts as a barrier, right, to hold down the higher prices. This is not to say that the, the, the barrier cannot break. It can break, definitely, right? But this is, uh, I would say, putting the odds in your favor. Okay, so this is for dollar yen. Uh, another market that I want to share with you, it's uh, Aussie Canadian. So this one over here, okay, it's a... Uh, Again, just zoom out of your chart. So whenever you look at a chart and you ask yourself, you know, man, what should I be doing? Buying, selling, or stay out? If you're not clear, zoom out. You will see the big picture. So Aussie Canadian, right? The big picture, you can see that. It's in the long-term range, right? Uh, around this uh, 91 cent area. And all the way up, the highs of, you know, $1 and 3 cents. So just zoom out, you can see that this is a key area of support. Aussie Canadian, right? Over here, if you can't see it, I'm sure you can see it over here. Okay, so again... I don't like to buy just because the price is at an area of support. I don't care whether it's a very significant or minor area of support. I always let the price right lead the way. So in this case, right, where you can see that Aussie Canadian, right, uh, at this point, the buyers, they are not any showing any signs of, you know, uh, in control. In fact, sellers are still in control. The, the bars are all still, you know, bearish towards the downside, uh, getting larger. So at this point, right, I will be on the sidelines to watch for bullish price action before I get long. Uh, one example could be a very simple false break when the market makes a very strong reversal back above this area of support and close higher. That is a false break setup and I want to, you know, go long, right, on this false break setup. Alternatively, right, you can go down to a lower time frame, like the 4-hour time frame, and you can analyze the price action, right? You can also watch how the market structure on this time frame unfolds itself. So, for example, as I've mentioned earlier, the sellers are still in control and it can be seen on this time frame. See a series of lower highs and lower lows. Sellers are still in control. So how do you know when the buyers are in control? So another way to look at it is that you want to see a break of structure. You want to see that series of lower highs and lower lows get broken. So how does it get broken? Well, it's when the market makes a new higher high and higher low. So for example, the market you know, goes into a range like this. Right, then it breaks out, comes out back here and goes up higher. At this point, now you have a higher high and higher low. So this is what I call a break of structure. It has break the earlier market structure, right? And this could be a start of a new uptrend. Okay, and don't forget, this market structure over here, it occurs right at this area of support. So right, you're leading against the higher time frame support, which kind of you know put the odds in your favor again, right? As, as mentioned earlier, trading off market structure. You're leading and market structure, right, to place your trades and set your stop loss. And and hypothetically, if you think about this, right, let's say the daily time frame, you go long, right, let's say you go long, market is about here, it breaks out, let's say you buy somewhere here. Just imagine this. And again, your stop losses are, let's say, below this, uh, this low, right, let's say 180 are below it somewhere here. Now, when you buy, this area of support, right, is acting in your favor. This is an area that would help you hold up higher prices. Okay, so if the market were to retrace down lower, it has difficulty breaking through this barrier because this is a area of support. Okay, this is where potential buying pressure could come in. So when your stops is away from it and when your entry point is as close as possible to this market structure, you're putting the odds in your favor. Make sense? Okay, so this is for Aussie Canadian. And as for target-wise, okay, I would say this would be a key level to be watching out for. Okay, before this swing low, right? Somewhere about here. 
right? So for swing traders out there, this could be a potential swing, right? That you can look to capture this one swing over here. Okay, so this is Aussie Canadian. And uh, moving on, right? Euro Swiss franc. So this one over here, it's a not so much of a trading setup, but to, to share with you my thought process, you know, into why I, I didn't take this particular trade. So you can see that over here, Euro Swiss franc, we have a somewhat of a reversal at this area of support. You can see that the price coming down into this area of support, all right? Then it reverse up higher. And the reason why I I'm not enticed to buy is because I realize that the market, right, there are barriers in coming in my way. So for example, if you look at a chart, right, if someone were to buy over here, shortly over here, right, this is a potential barrier where selling pressure could come in, right? Sellers could come in because this is a swing high over here, right? So if you want to be, to be buying or whenever you're trading, you want to be aware of this thing, what I call FTB, first trouble barrier. Where is the barrier on your chart, the first barrier on your chart where opposing pressure could come in? If it's too near your entry price, usually it's a trade that you don't want to take. Or if you really, really want to take, right, you want to be aware of the clues that the market is giving you to show you that, you know, there could be a sign of reversal. So for example, let's say you, you bought at this uh this 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 level over here and you notice this that is the first trouble barrier. And maybe you think that it could break, right? Fair enough, right? But you want to be aware when the market shows signs of reversal at this first trouble barrier, you want to be, you know, nimble and you know, exit your trade, right? Because the market is already, you know, showing signs of reversal. It's coming to a trouble barrier, and you know, there is reversal signals telling you that the market is about to reverse against you. So in this case, you can see that this over here is one signal, right, coming to this trouble barrier this one over here right the reversal by here right you should you know be prepared to you know just exit the trade because clearly the market is not working in your favor okay so the key thing i want to share with you is that whenever you put on a trade be aware of this thing called first trouble barrier where might opposing pressure come in all right and and if the market if the first trouble barrier is too near your entry price usually i just skip the trade altogether so let's have a look at an example right where the first trouble barrier is actually quite a distance away Okay, so imagine this, right? So dollar against the Chinese yuan. So you can see over here, right? Let's say this is a swing low, right? I didn't take this trade, but I just want to illustrate a concept. Is that let's say a trader who shot the breakdown of this swing low over here. Where is the first trouble barrier? Chances are it's at this area over here, around the $6.80 area. And you can see that from a risk to reward standpoint, the potential profit is so much more compared to the Euro Swiss franc market you've seen earlier. So you can see that over here, you know, there is a potential profit of this, this much over here. Okay, this whole portion. Whereas on the Euro Swiss franc example, you can see that if someone were to buy, let's say, near this uh this highs, okay, there's really not much meat left in the move at all. Okay, so this is what I mean, right? Of first trouble barrier. The further the first trouble barrier is away from your entry point, the better, right, the trading setup is. Okay, so this is a very important concept, and you know, really not many traders realize this. And uh what else do I have to share? And uh, okay, and one last thing, right? New Zealand yen. Okay, so New Zealand yen, this one over here. Okay, so so let's talk about the same concept again. So New Zealand yen is a trade I took, right? So notice the price again. This is an area of support. Price came in. There wasn't actually any strong price rejection, and then it it, it consolidated over here before it breaks down. So you can see that this portion over here right, is where I got interested to take a short trade. So this looks right somewhat like a descending triangle or a build up right lower highs coming to the swing low over here and recall i said right you want to be trading near market structure or at least have your stop loss right beyond market structure because those market structure could help you could be a barrier right to prevent the price from you know uh, moving too much against you so i went short on the breakdown of this swing low stop loss one atr above this highs why did i set my stop loss one atr above it because as mentioned earlier, previous support, right? This is previous support. When the price breaks below, it now becomes what? Previous support becomes resistance, right? What I, what I shared earlier. So in this case, right, if your stop loss is a distance away from this market structure, this uh, area of resistance, right, could help you, you know, hold down the prices. So price have difficulty reaching your stop loss. So that works in your favor. Am I right? So you can see that in this case, the market did rally it rally back into that market structure, all right? And this became previous support, become resistance. And then the market reversed shortly from here afterwards. So again, the point I'm trying to make is that when you set your stops, don't set it at 
an arbitrary level. Set it away from market structure. So the market structure works for you. So the price has difficulty reaching your stops, right? So a mistake that many traders make is that, you know, they, they, they set their stop loss based on feeling, based on the number of pips, which doesn't make sense. So for example, they, they could have the same entry price as me. They shot the swing low, right? Let's say they, they shot the swing low. And here, they shot the swing low. Okay, and where do they set their stop loss? They, they oh, let me have a, a fix, a 100 pip stop loss, 150 pip stop loss. So their stop loss is maybe at 72 level or slightly above, right? And you can see that it doesn't really make sense, right? Because when the pullback comes, okay, it doesn't care where your stops is. The only thing that it respects is market structure. These are levels on your chart, right, that the market, right, would respect. At least I believe, right, it respects, you know, this type of, you know, support resistance structure on your chart. So, Setting arbitrary stops right, is like, you know, just giving money to the market, right? So when you want to set your stop loss, do it, right, at a logical level and away from that level, at least, right? I don't put it just smack above the highs because the market could just, you know, uh, sweep above the highs and then reverse from it. I usually give it more buffer. Yes, my stops is wider, but at least it keeps me in the trade longer. I don't get stopped out, you know, unnecessarily. Okay, so this is a New Zealand yen and uh, again, right, uh, uh, a setup that I want to share with you and a very important concept which is, you know, uh, talking about setting your stops. Now, if you've enjoyed the market analysis, right, then I want to welcome you to join Pro Traders H, right? This is my premium membership, right, where you will get such market analysis every single week, right? I usually publish this type of videos on a weekend to share with you my, my insights of the market, the trading opportunities I'm looking at, the trades I took, and much more. So that's not all, right? Because as a Pro Traders H member, you get many benefits that come along with it. So for example, you have access to the backtest research lab. So this is a lab, right, where I pretty much backtest the financial markets to tell you what works and what don't in the financial markets. So we have uh, different uh, stuff going on. We have, you know, things that talk about stock markets, quantitative trading, and much more. So all this over here in the backtest research lab, and I regularly, you know, add in new lessons, new findings that I have in the financial markets. Then also we have the uh, weekly trade alerts. This is basically, right, the video that you've seen earlier, but it's on a weekly basis. So every single week I publish such videos, right? So you can see my analysis, my thought process, the trades I took, and you can, you know, shorten your learning curve and quickly, you know, level up your trading. So you can see that, you know, every week we publish a new video on the markets. And moving on, right, uh, we have a forum coming soon. So for those of you who who are watching this right now, the forum might already be up. Okay, so this is uh, coming soon. We have a premium trading strategy, guys. This is for you, right? You know, especially if you enjoy reading my blog post and you want a PDF version of it. So every month we upload a new PDF trading strategy, guys. It's uh, free for you to download. You can just click on it, right? And you will be brought to a PDF, a PDF link, a PDF page to download it. We have a exclusive training webinars for you to, you know, to... Uh, help you, you know, level up your trading, learn new trading strategies and techniques. Okay, these are exclusive webinars that you will not find elsewhere. Then we have, you know, uh, trading books and investing books that I recommend. Trading checklist, right? So before you put on a trade, you can, you know, download this checklist to re review it, right? To make sure that, you know, you're on the, on the right side, on the right page, right? And not doing anything funny or silly, right? We have the proprietary trading indicators vault. This is for MT4 uh, users. You can download all these indicators uh, to, you know, help you with your own trading, like, you know, the MACD, MT4, there's some issue with it. We have fixed it over here. We have the Donchen channel, a news reporter that alerts to you, you know, potential, you know, uh, important news that's coming up and much more. It's all over here in the uh, indicator vault. And also we have the simple mean reversion trading strategy that, uh, that you'll learn, right, to trade the market. So this is a very simple strategy for you to get started, especially, you know, if you do not know which strategy to go with. Start with this simple mean reversion trading strategy because it is a uh, tested, back tested, right? To identify first and foremost which markets tend to mean revert, which markets have a mean reverting characteristics, right? Then I explain to you, right, the uh, setup to trade this type of mean reverting markets, right? So you really have the odds in your favor, right? Applying the right trading setup in the right type of market condition. Okay, so this is a, a mean reverting trading strategy that 
anyone can learn, right? Even if you have no trading experience. So this is what you'll get, right? As a pro Traders Edge member, right? Uh, new content are updated regularly for the backtest research lab, weekly trade alerts, premium strategy guides, and, and much more, right? And also forum is coming up soon so you can interact with like-minded traders. So I'll put the link below so you can check out Pro Traders H. And, and with that said, right, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon.